All right, welcome to the the Chris Leonard YouTube channel, and uh, today we're gonna talk about doing a G-force transmission, which is a like NASCAR dog box style transmission in an S550 Mustang. So a lot of this stuff is gonna be pretty much the same. Anything from like uh, 1996 and up, uh, a lot of the parts are gonna be the same because you're gonna be using a uh, modular belt housing and uh, all that stuff. But um, there are gonna be some differences. So let's look at what we have for parts. So here's all our parts that we have for the swap. Um, big shout out to Mantic Clutch. So Mantic is actually sponsoring this build and um, they gave me a really good deal on this clutch. It's a beautiful twin disc. We're trying out some new stuff and it's their uh, Sarah Metallic for the S550 drift car. Um, solid hubs and everything. It's a pretty trick piece. And um, we got a quick time bell housing. So this bell housing is a uh, RM6082, which is basically a 4.6 uh, to Muncie slash Jericho, whatever transmission. Um, so this will fit the Coyotes as well. Uh, next we have our G-Force GSR transmission. So this is a, a NASCAR piece. This is uh, used, but it's been gone through, made sure everything was good. Um, for the S550 cars, we're gonna use the long shifter. For the uh, four six cars, you're probably gonna wanna use the medium shifter, um, just because on the MT82s, the shifter is set way back, and this one still actually um, needed the firewall cut a little bit, because it's just a little bit not long enough. Um, I found this sicky shifter. It's gonna need a little bit of modifications, but um, it just needs to be ground down on the bottom. A little bit but this is extended shifter uh srrt04 um so this will work it's pretty cheap solution for a shifter rod for that um we got our brake bleeder assembly our hose for the brake bleeder these bolts uh mantic supply those are just the flywheel bolts um right here we have a ram uh clutch kit so this is also gonna be for the uh, coyote stuff or you can run like a mcleod uh master cylinder or something to feed this um so this is the ram 78 350 kit we're gonna use some dorman uh bushings for the pilot bushings uh this is a 690023 this kit comes with five but they're like only 25 bucks this was from Summit as well. So we got five of these. And instead of running the bearing, we're gonna just run the simple bushings to fit the modular to the uh, GSR pilot shaft. Our slave cylinder is gonna be a tilting piece, the 604100. Um, these are pretty pricey, but Hopefully you'll never have to buy one ever again because they are super nice pieces and Tilton's always a good name. So here you go. Really nice piece. This will bolt right on the bell housing on the other side like that. And um, comes with stickers, which are sweet. And your fittings to mount your lines to. So all that stuff's included with that. Um, the drive shaft's gonna have to be custom made when we put this in. I'll tell you the length because I have to measurement Measure it Then uh, this has to be a billet piece for the uh, GSRs because it actually does ride on a bearing um, You don't really want to use like a stock Chevy piece because I think they'll break um, So yeah, that this is just a billet uh, slip yoke for a GSR you can find those all over the place for um, for NASCAR pages. And then we're using a SunX adapter to mount to the uh, rear axle. Um, so they have an auto and a manual one. 
So make sure when you're looking at the SunX uh, rear yokes, you buy the one for your car. Um, so once again, this is S550 only. If you have a earlier year, you'll need to get the correct yoke for that. But everything else will be pretty much the same, except you'll need a nice uh, hydraulic master setup. Or you could probably mess with this because it actually does have the spot for a clutch fork and stuff. But I really think that that would just be a headache, especially when you can just buy a bolt on a uh, slave cylinder. So uh, let's get started. Also for this, um, you're probably gonna have to make your own uh, cross member. I made this, it took me a couple hours, nothing super crazy. Just bent up some eighth inch steel and a little angle iron, measured everything. Super simple, pretty sturdy, and uh, it really wasn't that bad to do. Just use an angle grinder and a vise and a hammer. So under here, we're already ready to accept the transmission pieces. Uh, I'm sure there's a bajillion write-ups of how to pull the transmission out of these cars, so we'll skip that. Go find someone else that uh, covered that because I'm sure it won't be that hard to do. Um, I do have 2M stainless long tube headers. These things fit friggin' mint. Um, with the bell housing, it was very close here, so I did grind the bell housing a little bit, and I'll show you that. Um, make sure you have your reluctor ring here and uh, we'll be ready to pull this. All right, so using our slide hammer, this is all stuff I got from Harbor Freight. So I don't really do pilot bearings all that much. You put that in, you're gonna wanna screw this whole setup into here to tighten it up. Once that's tight, just come here, hold it out. Try not to pull the cage off. I'd like to get the whole thing. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have to do this in two pieces, unfortunately. This is a brand new Pilot Baron. Dang it. That's what happens when you're using too many devices. All right, so got this in here again underneath the little sleeve for the last piece of this bearing. We'll slide this out. There we go. Hell yeah. It's actually got a couple little grooves in there where you're supposed to put this, but it uh, didn't want to grab on the other side of this. So uh, that stinks. Oh well. But um, yeah, no need to buy any of this stuff because you can get it from AutoZone for free. Mint. All right, so this is just a Ford Mercury regular grease. Um, I'm sure you can use a bunch of different types of greases. I'm gonna just grease this up real good, make sure that it doesn't get dry because uh, with these bushings, they uh, need some lube and um, as long as it's not overkill, I don't think that you can really put too much unless it starts getting all over the clutch. And then you have a bad time. So just uh, use your best judgment there. Don't have it squirting out all over the place, but uh, definitely put enough to make everything happy. So this is just a basically like brass bushing. It's out of the roller bearing. Um, so you can see here that fits into the block, perfect. We'll come over here, check it on our shaft, make sure that it's right and perfect on the shaft. Love that. We'll just come here, we'll start tapping this in just a little bit to get it started. Now that it's uh, stuck up in there, we'll take our socket, kind of get like the biggest one that you can find to fit on it. Try to hit it in straight. And basically as long as this is uh, flush or just a little bit less than flush, you should be fine. Um, I might actually hit this out down until it bottoms out uh, because that will make sure that it's nice and straight. Because that's how this one sits. It goes all the way until it bottoms. So 
Uh, I just decided right now that that's what we're gonna do. Those yokes have quite a big shaft on them, and uh, I don't think that's gonna make any difference from here to there. Uh, and now I know it's absolutely perfect straight in that hole. So, now that that's pressed in nice and tight, put a little bit more grease on it, get it nice and in there. So now around this hole doesn't really matter, you just kind of want it in there. Our stator is in place, or our reluctor wheel, I guess, is in place. And we'll put our backing plate up and in, like that. Should fit nice and flush. All right, so next up, we need to take the clutch apart. So all these bolts were just to hold this thing together and um, I have new bolts and washers right here to put on the setup. So we'll destack this the way it came. Uh, these discs I did mess up, so this will go around like that. Um, but when I inspected it, I wasn't really paying attention. And uh, so you're gonna have each of these uh, rivet on plates are going to face outwards so this one's gonna face to the pressure plate this one's gonna face towards the flywheel try not to touch the uh, clutch pads too much um, because you don't want oil on them from your fingers Uh, these should all be the same hopefully looks like these are used he did tell me he was going to use some remanufactured parts um, so it looks like these have been used but I'm not worried about the little scrapes on it it's going to do that the first time I start the car anyway and we'll get our new bag here so uh, there's a Nordlock style washer that goes underneath the nut. And this is going to hold pressure on it and kind of keep this from uh, backing out. It's a pretty trick way of uh, keeping these things nice and tight. You want to make sure you note the uh, way that these are facing. So it kind of like cups the nut here. That way once you tighten it down it pushes uh, pressure down on it. So. Before you put this uh, flywheel in, you're going to want to put the bolts through the back or else you're going to be really upset when you have to fish these through the starter hole, which I'm not sure if you can do, but uh, it looks like it's possible. So this will only line up one way. Try to figure it out as you get it up there. There's like one that's a little bit wider. So I think it's gonna go like this, but I could be 100% wrong. Or perfect first try, look at that. And we'll start a bolt in. So uh, these are ARP fasteners, but I'm not gonna use the ARP lube. I am going to use the thread locker, so I don't like how that went in. Hopefully it holds it. Um, the thread locker will make sure that no oil comes through the crank and goes onto the clutch and leaks out and does a bunch of bad things. So we're gonna install all those and that says torque it to 70 uh, foot pounds. So uggy duggies will do. All right, so got a 5 8 12 point on the Milwaukee on setting two. 
star pattern. Uh, next up, we're gonna clean this face up because I've been touching it. You can see all the fingerprints all over it. And, um, you know, just to avoid any problems, we're gonna get all the grease off. So I'll just use brake cleaner. I'll wipe this off. Brand new. See all that? You don't want that on your brand new clutch. It's gross. Gross. So uh, next we'll be putting our standoffs on. See how this goes. I haven't put this together yet. Boop. Oh, boop. Oh, God. So try not to push that uh, bolt in too much. Come on now. Very delicate situation over here. I got some with bigger gouges than others, so I'm going to try to offset them. So, uh, where is my alignment tool? These billet alignment tools make uh, installing the clutch way nicer. So we're gonna install this pretty much as one piece because I already stacked it exactly how it came off. So offset this friction material a little bit. I don't know if it really matters, but I feel like it would help with heat across the uh, center pad. So it's evenly distributed. Go through. There we go. Oh no. No, no. Let's go on the light so I can actually see what I'm friggin' doing. Alright. This thing's super tight, so it's really hard to slide the discs on there. It'll make putting the transmission in that much easier. Let's see if I can get one more spline over. Oh dang. I've always used the plastic ones. So uh this is somewhat new to me. It's definitely tighter. Alright. So uh that's pretty much it. It's not perfectly in the center, but uh it's pretty dang close. Now I gotta just wiggle it just enough. Get it around this centerpiece. There we go. All right. So put this in around these posts. Hopefully, maybe. There we go. Got a lot of moving parts here. Try to get this thing perfect. That's all good. I'm gonna get some light. All right, so I just clean this off. We'll set this in here like that. Now I'm sure this is gonna be fun. I have to sit this on here and try to not push all the bolts in. So again, make sure the cone is facing in on these washers. We'll start the nuts on. Ooh, it's magnetic? That's pretty trick. I like that. Didn't know that was a thing. All right, so yeah, you fight with this for a little bit and uh, eventually you get it to work. Got everything started in. You kind of just got to put your finger underneath in the back and uh, squeeze it together. And uh, I believe these are 25 foot pounds, but we're going to run these down with the impact. And a star pattern, of course. And 
and we'll take out this uh, questionably shaped object from here. It's real tight. I should probably put grease on this next time because this is a, a little friggin' nuts. All right, there she is. The clutch is installed. All right, we're super busy in the shop today, so don't mind the uh, noise, but uh, I had to take a break because I had to pick up these bolts. So you gotta get the uh, chamfered edge uh, quarter 20 bolts. And then these are gonna drop right through the bell housing like this. And this is to mount your uh, throw out bearing. So we'll put that in. And then I got the uh, lock nuts because I don't wanna have an issue with this down the road. All right, so that will go on there. And this will hold the throwout bearing uh, where it needs to be. And then on the transmission, there actually should not be a throwout bearing uh, shaft for this because it doesn't actually have to ride on that at all. So you won't contact the uh, input shaft with this setup. So these bolt heads are not sitting flush in here. So I'm gonna go in with a drill bit and clean this out a little bit. That way these uh, don't come in contact with the transmission because I want the transmission to sit here perfectly flush. The uh, throwout bearing is actually just riding on this lip right here. I'd like to get it flat onto this. So I'm also going to grind the very edge of this down, make sure that it's sitting properly on the uh, bolt flange here. All right, so we got our lines all in. Now we're good to sit this up in here, put a couple bolts in it, and then we got to measure the throw up bearing to make sure we have the right run out on it. Do you want to hold this so it doesn't fall? Yeah. Thanks, pal. All All right, that gap looks pretty big because this gap should be 100 to 180 thou. Um, so I'll get my feeler gauges out, but it does look like it's a pretty big gap. So we'll see. All right, so um, this is kind of hard to do with this clutch because of how it sits in in the pressure plate. So I'm just taking the uh, feeler gauges out one by one and kind of sliding them in um, and taping them together. So I got my stack up here, but I keep dropping all my stuff into the bottom of the bell housing. You can see how it's, uh, or hopefully you can see, the uh, feeler gauges are in there and they're taped and they're kind of stuck. So I'm trying to fish that out, but I got my height. It's this stack up with the 10 thou and then uh, this stack up here that I can't get out, but this was a 90 thou, I know that. So we'll see, I don't even know if it's good. So I guess I can just measure this now. All right, so 23 plus 24 plus 25. Is your girlfriend going to Baylor? So 60, 72, 82 plus 90. There's 172. So that's within my... Uh, Tilton says 100 to 150. Mantic told me 150 to 180. So I am like perfect in that uh, 150 to 180. And uh, I think I'll be good to run this the way it is. So that's sweet. If uh, I needed to go any closer, I'd put shims underneath the bottom of these pedestals and that would push it closer to uh, close up my gap to the clutch. All right, so with this, there's a torque value, but just like installing transmissions, you just kind of use an impact and uh, use a crisscross pattern to suck this thing in. All 
All right, so when I dry fit the transmission in here before, I did notice that it was hitting a little bit. So this area here, I'm going to massage with this. You don't need that. All right, so I'm zip tying the upper line to this line over here, so I know that it's not gonna bounce into the uh, clutch, because I'm worried about this kind of hitting over here. But um, then we tape this up, to help with uh, chafing and uh, we'll run this back up to the master cylinder when we get a chance but um, these should be more than long enough to do that or I'm gonna just drop it all over the place and it's not actually gonna get up there but at least I tried the thought was there all right so I was able to run it on this side of the throw up bearing so now I'm not really worried about it hitting the input shaft or the clutch. It's zip tied up nice. We'll trim this and uh, this has chafe tape on it. So uh, once we get it all bolted up, I'll put a zip tie around the ear to hold this tight so it doesn't hit on this side of the clutch. And uh, hopefully we don't have any issues with that. That would be pretty crappy. So you can see here, this is uh, perfectly factory now. Uh, straightened out nice and uh straight for the transmission to be put in um hopefully it doesn't hit anymore um if it does uh i don't think i'm gonna pull it back out so uh kind of is what it is but um let's put this in and uh see what happens all right when you're doing these transmissions you don't have to lube the shaft up because the throw bearing is actually not riding on it but I still put lube on the very tip of it because that's going to go into your pilot bearing. So uh, let's see if I can actually get this in with the cross member in or the drive shaft loop. Um, I pushed it back as far as I could to hope that I can uh, not have to pull that if I got to pull the transmission or the clutch um, like on a track day. So let's give it a shot. <clears throat> here yeah but um i think i'm on the top bolt hole here right yeah so you kind of gotta like come back what am i on i'm gonna come up a little bit more Can I get a couple uh, oh, two by fours? Yeah. yeah. It's not good to hang this on the clutch, like if it's not going in straight. <sighs> good thing this thing is light. I don't think I'm in gear. If I put this in gear, I should be able to move that input shaft where I need it. <sighs> Try to get this thing in gear and turn this uh, output shaft. I think it's in gear. Oh, I think I just felt it moving a little bit. Oh yeah, she's 100% not in gear. Damn race transmissions. <clears throat> yeah, I think that th that should go in. Uh, we'll do it the first couple by hand to make sure that's not pulling the discs yeah so i felt it go through the clutch disc and uh i'm pretty sure we're good on that all right so this is my custom cross member we have here it's just a piece of angle iron some eighth bent to match and a couple bolts uh, to use the factory bolt holes super simple piece um i made sure to measure the uh driveline angle so it's about one degree up and one degree down and um i didn't have to do anything crazy there so bolt the cross member in 
It's gonna go up a lot more, but uh, we can pull it in. Um, if your transmission didn't come with a bushing, you can get this from AutoZone. It's just an energy suspension, 1036 bushing. It's pretty nice about using Chevy style stuff is uh, you can get it just about anywhere. I'll run it in with the impact. Alright, so with these you have to put some grease on the shaft. So we're going to grease this up real good. Uh, because this actually goes into a bushing on the end of the transmission. So you don't want to run that dry. Oh, it slides so nice with all the grease on it. Oh yeah, baby girl. So these bolts actually came with the Sunex uh, yoke, so that's pretty nice of them to supply those. Hot dog. Big <laughs> cheesy sausages. So you can't really get in here too good with the impact, so I'm gonna just go around with a pry bar and a wrench. Make sure these are nice and snug. All right, so now we gotta mount our bleeder to the firewall. So I'm gonna go right about here on the cowl, and uh, that way it'll be right next to the master cylinder and everything and be higher up to get a good bleed on it. Alright, so the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bleed the clutch. Uh, Tilton's got a pretty good uh, procedure on there that comes with the clutch. So basically you're going to just fill this up um, and you're going to break the bleeder and you're going to lightly rest your foot on the pedal just enough so it doesn't press the clutch. You're going to work the uh, hydraulic system like that by opening and shutting the bleeder basically like you're bre uh, bleeding your brakes but you don't don't want to actually cycle the clutch until you put a pedal stop that way you don't over throw the uh, pressure plate so uh, that's pretty much it for the transmission swap one thing I did forget to mention is you will have to cut the uh, transmission tunnel a little bit for the opening here um, so you basically move it up about four inches and that will allow for the whole shifter assembly to come through the floor another thing is the drive shaft is right at 45 inches from the center of the u-joint to the center of the u-joint and uh, that only gives you about a two inch maybe stick out there so you could go longer if you really wanted to but this shaft is so long that's not gonna really make a difference. All right, so there you have it. That's how you do a dog box swap in an S550 Mustang. Uh, so a lot of the stuff's gonna be the same for other generation, like four, six Mustangs, but um, obviously the drive shaft's gonna be a different length and you're gonna be using a cable clutch instead of the hydraulic. But um, hit me up with any questions. I'll help however I can and make sure you hit the little alarm to 
notify you when I do new videos and make sure you subscribe uh, because that helps me out and that will uh, make it so I can make a little bit of money off these YouTube videos and bring you more content.